morning, everyone. Today is this. Good morning, everyone. Today is the sixth of April, Monday morning. <clears throat> good morning. Hope you're having a good week this week. Um, having a little bit of a challenge with YouTube, and so I'm just going to broadcast this on Facebook, and I'll put it on YouTube a little bit later. The apostles preached the imminent return of Jesus Christ, even when they were down here. And you might say, well, how can that be? How could they preach the imminent return of Christ? And now we know it's been 2,020 years since Christ ascended back to heaven. What's imminent about that? Well, we're living in the last days. The last days started when Christ ascended back to heaven. And he made a promise. He said, if I go away, I will return again in the like manner that I went. We're still looking for his return today, are we not? And so... <clears throat> I want to read a passage in the 21st chapter of Luke. They ask him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? What sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not therefore after them. But when ye shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your hearts, not to meditate before what you shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you they shall cause to be put to death. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair of your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them that which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and them, let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let them not that are in the countries enter thereinto. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, where there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon the people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, and the sea and the waves roaring, <clears throat> men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then, and then, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great joy, glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads.
for your redemption draweth nigh. Well, this is one of the passages that Christ is foretelling um, the return, his return. It's foretelling his return. We can find parallel passages in the 24th chapter of Matthew and the 13th chapter of, of Mark. Of Mark. <clears throat> Mark 13, <clears throat> Luke 21, and Matthew 24. Now, are we living in the last days today? Well, we're, two th we're 2,020 years closer to the coming of Jesus Christ than we were 2,020 years ago. And we look around us and we see the moral depravity of our society. We see how we now are living amongst people who <clears throat> mock the name of Christ. They ridicule the Bible. They ridicule those of faith in Jesus Christ as the Messiah. They malign those of us who are in the faith. You know, <clears throat> there have been those all the way through history that have shook their fist in the face of God. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? But Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. There is only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him, on Jesus, the iniquity of us all. All that the Father hath given him will come to him, and all that come to him I will in no wise cast out, John six thirty seven. This is the will of God, the Father, that all that the Father hath given me, I will lose nothing, but raise him up at the last day. Jesus Christ proclaimed that he was the eternal Son of God. And when he was hanging on the cruel and rugged cross of Calvary, he said, It is finished. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, signifying that we now had entrance into the Holy of Holies through the completed work of Jesus Christ. He paid the perfect sacrifice on the cross for his people. He is our only hope. And so he's coming back. He's coming back soon. It may be morning, it may be evening, it may be noon, but he is coming back in all power and glory. There's no secret rapture. The Bible says every eye shall see him. He's coming back as a victorious, conquering king. He is now seated in heaven, seated at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He is the beginning and the end.
There is no hope apart from the completed work of Christ for his people. So when we look in our world and we see everything seems to be fragmenting, let's just remember that Christ's bleeding hands and feet are proof that God the Father's demands were met. Foreordained before creation, God's decree was already set. Before you and I were ever born, he was slain, you see. His bleeding wounds and hands and feet were a part, crucial part of this decree. God's justice was met through Christ on Calvary. For, wretched, for such a wretched sinner, and that sinner was me. Thank you, Lord, for suffering in my stead to raise me to new life from the dead. Are you looking for his return? Are your eyes, are you looking toward the eastern sky? Um, I know I am. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels will beckon me through heaven's open door. I don't feel at home in this world anymore. We're living in very evil days. And we were told that it was going to happen too. He told us in the 24th chapter of Matthew. Vulgar movies, pornography, and YouTube. Put no evil thing before our eyes that causes us to sin. Let's start acting like we've truly been born again. Lord, give me a hatred for all this sin. Lord, cause me to turn my eyes and look on thee. The one who bled and died and paid the price for me. Help me not to return to the beggarly elements of this world, but may your Holy Spirit guide me by your word. Lot was vexed while in Sodom. We're in Sodom too. Are we vexed like Lot was? Do we abhor evil too? Or are we drawn away of our own lust and enticed? God help us in the midst of all of this vice. Turn our eyes to you, we pray this day, and then our thoughts and minds will be on you. Turn us, and we will be turned. You make all things new. Give us a hatred for sin and cause us to run from it. Give us your continued grace and mercy so that in heavenly places we can sit. Let us not be conquered by sin and death and hell. Let us cry out to you when, when we are weak and our flesh is fell. Only you can give us victory over prevailing sin and cause us to walk in truth until the very end. Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, even in the midst of Babylon. In God, we only trust. Well, let's look toward the heavens for the return of Jesus Christ. He's coming back in all his power and glory. And those of us who have been blood-bought, those of us who've been chosen in him from the foundation of the world, those of us who have been given the salvation, the gift of grace, we will also be recipients of the eternal life in paradise with Jesus Christ. What a, what a thought. When I think of God's love and what he did for me by dying on the cross unconditionally, I'm sometimes overwhelmed in my mind and my soul why this precious Savior would even care to give himself on Calvary for my life to spare. He could have gone about doing other things like watching his creation and listening to his angels sing. But to come to this sin-cursed 
Irish British Low. How can I thank you, Lord, for being oh so kind to realize that before creation you had this worm in mind? To come and shed your blood and endure such scorn and pain should cause me to give you praise in an eternal refrain. Help me demonstrate in some real way this grace and love to others is my prayer today. So many times I forget what an awesome thing you did for me when you died and rose again to set my soul at liberty. So let us today look forward to the imminent return of Jesus Christ. May the good Lord be with you is my prayer.